Okay, I've had a couple of people ask me how I do my uh, handles for my Battle Ready Stainless Steel Swords. And that's what we're going to show you today. Just for comparison, this was billed as a full tang Battle Ready uh, Carbon Steel Sword. And that's not enough. That's not going to work out. This one's going to have to be completely redone as well. But just to show you, just because you're paying more doesn't mean you're getting more. This was probably half the cost for the stainless steel. It's got good flexibility. It's going to make a great sword. All we have to do is fix the handle. This is how it came. You got just a piece of uh, thread welded on there. And of course that's useless. So all you had coming out of the back of the guard was just that piece of thread. And yeah, that's why they're called just ornamental they're not going to do you any good. But we can fix that. I've, this is just a piece of mild steel I got from the Home Depot. It's the same thickness as the stainless steel sword here. Now my welds, I always put a bit of a taper on there. I forget what kind of weld that's called, but if you're going to grind it flat you have to do that so that you get enough strength in there to, uh, to do the job. Now you always want to remember when you're looking at a stainless steel sword to improve, give yourself enough room here to keep you away from this weld or be able to just cut all the way into the blade as far as you need your handle, either way. But you just don't want to weld too close to where your guard is going to be because that will detemper it and of course that will weaken it. So we're going to move this guard all the way up here and that should be far enough away that that weld's not going to affect us. I'll spare you the pain of watching me weld because I'm not a welder. I have a MIG welder and I can stick two pieces of metal together, but it's not pretty. But I'll get this all welded up and cut to shape and I'll show you what I've done and show you the next step. Okay, I've got it all welded up and cut out. You can see how wide that tang is there now. That'll be plenty strong enough. I welded a little bit of threads on here. That'll be for our pommel. It'll actually, I'll cut, I'll trim it down a little bit, and this will actually cover where the weld is and be snug up against the, the wood handle, um, which will give it a lot more strength. And we can slide this. I can slide this handle off for you. You can see I've got it tapered there and I've got the inside of the tang opened up with a file and tapered exactly the same. So it fits good and snug. There's no rattle. When I go to set it permanently, I'll tamp it down with a hammer and probably do some epoxy as well. And I'll lock it in place good and proper, and I'll show you that when we get there. But you can just see the difference. This little thing is not enough. That will get you through the zombie apocalypse. When we get it all together, I'll take you outside and show you some cut tests. But that'll do nicely. All right, thought I'd show you how I do the handles or the wood part. Take your slat and put it under like that. Trace it. Any hardwood will work. Um, I prefer oak. I had some of this laying around. I don't know what it is, but it's pretty solid, so it'll work. Um, as far as how thick it goes, that's just a matter of personal preference. I like it pretty thin because it's so wide here. If it gets too big, it's just hard to hold on to. After that, I take and cut, cut some slats uh, the same width as the blade. And what we'll simply do is glue these on there right next to our pencil line 
and of course put your other slat on top glue that all together and then you'll have a perfectly shaped handle to push on there you can use I use Gorilla Glue a lot you can use uh, Type Bond 2 works really well um, I'm sure just about any wood glue would work but that's about it I'll get it all glued up and show you the next step alright we got it all glued up here I'll go ahead and finish trimming it with the scroll saw and then we'll use the router with a quarter round and round it off and we'll see how it looks we got it all rounded and onto the tang now these should fit nice and tight I had to use a hammer to tap this one on I used a grinder to narrow down this end right here and then the pommel will thread all the way down and come snug up onto that the screw here uh, is just putting pressure on here because I don't want all the pressure on the pommel this is met not as good a steel as the regular nut is so I've used that to give it compression and that's pretty much it all you need now is to wrap it or you know stain it Whatever you want to do to finish off the handle, wrapping it with some uh, mason's line will add some strength to it and keep the uh, seams from splitting out um, under extreme use. But we'll get it all finished up and I'll take it outside and do some cut tests for you. Alright, I got the handle all wrapped up. Thought I'd show you how that turned out. This is one I did earlier and this stainless sword turned out really great in fact I'm doing this um, tutorial because somebody asked me how I did the handles I did this handle just a little differently this one I used Mason's line um, which you can get from the Home Depot and it works great you can get it all kinds of colors if you want to do a zombie green or whatever on this one I used this it's a much thinner string, it's still very strong. Um, you can get this at the craft stores. And if we can get a close up, you can see how many times I had to wrap that. It took me a little over an hour to get it done, but I think it was worth it. It turned out great. And it really compressed the wood and made it a lot stronger. All in all, it's turning out really great. The next thing we've got to do is we've got to edge it. The best thing to do that with is an angle grinder with a sanding disc on there. Um, almost all stainless steel swords you get are going to come with a false edge like this. And when I get out there and get set up, I'll give you an idea of how to do it. The other thing we can do is we can use the polishing kit and put a mirror polish on it like we got on this. I may or may not do that. Just to show you real quick how I set it up to do the put an edge on it. I clamp it like this leaving that side exposed and I'll just take my grinder with the sanding disc and just carefully put my edge on there try and keep it about 22 and a half degrees that's what most of your uh, sharpeners are pretty simple just takes a little practice okay here we are we got her all finished up. Looks good. Now we're going to make sure that it's battery ready. 
People love cutting milk jugs, and it's pretty fun. It's easy. I don't know if that's really going to tell us much about the sword as much as the swordsman. We want something a little more challenging. Can of rock star there. No problem. And if we ever get attacked by a milk jug, I'm sure that would be fine. But I want to know what's going to cut a zombie's arm off. Coffee creamer, this is a much thicker plastic. Got our wood jammed in there to act as uh, some bones. Let's see how we do on that. No problem. Got one more. Let's give it a try. No problem whatsoever. You can spend a bunch of money on a battle ready carbon steel sword, and you're not going to get much better. I'm way under $100 for this stainless steel, even with all the materials, and an afternoon of fixing it.